Okay, so before we go over the classes of insurance as provided in R810607, we'll have this one first. 13 different types of insurance policies in the Philippines. Okay, so again, the usual sentiment is that people do not want insurance because, you know, if nothing happens, then you technically wasted your money, right? It went for nothing. You did not, you did not get any benefit from it. But again, it's some sort of protection or uh, a guarantee that if something happens, then someone else will be covering the expenses or the cost for you. You know, be it uh, life insurance, health insurance, educational insurance, and other types of insurance, essentially. So insurance, you know, they are insuring uh, that uh, whatever happens if, in case you suffer any loss or damage or damnation, they call it damnation, okay, they are going to provide you with uh, an insurance or a guarantee that uh, they will cover the cost, okay? So most people do think that way and essentially more and more people are uh, really, you know, they call this, seeing the benefit that just in case that something really happens then it's a good thing right and in case nothing happens then it's also a good thing because you're safe you're healthy nothing bad happened to you okay so do not you know let's not look at it as some sort of a waste of money but uh you know we no one can actually tell the future no one can say for sure that they're going to live a long life they're going to be healthy for a long time they're not going to uh get any sickness or contract any illness so uh there is no guarantee of that that it will not happen to us so there is always that possibility that it may or it may not happen all right so in the case that it happens then we have the insurance that would help us cover the cost because if you do not have the insurance then you yourself would be uh paying for the expenses or your family members right or your loved ones would be the one who would uh, bear the cost right so now that we have that out of the way um let's go over the 15 uh, sorry 13 types of insurance that they have listed here so they have uh, different types of life insurances uh, life insurance in general then you have your term life insurance Whole life insurance, universal life, and then you have your variable life, right? So essentially, these first five are uh, life insurance, right? And then you have health insurance, educational insurance, vehicle and accident insurance, compulsory third-party liability or the surety ship, uh, property insurance in case of fire, earthquake, theft, that kind of thing, and then you have your travel insurance, right? So first off, life insurance. So in case the principal has died, a lump sum amount will be given to the principal's family. All right. So whenever you get a life insurance, it's not for yourself, but it's for the family members that you're going to leave behind. Right. And then you have your term life insurance. Uh, this is a type of life insurance. You will get benefit in case the policyholder dies if he or she doesn't die in the period of coverage. You may have nothing back. Okay, so term life insurance from the word term. So there is a specified period for the coverage. Okay, let's say uh, the person is insured for only one year. So if nothing happens to him for that one year, then uh, the insurance, the policy would uh, be terminated, right? Because it's only good for one year. So if nothing happens for that one year, then, you know, no insurance. And then, of course, it's a good thing if nothing happens, right? But then, let's say the following year or years after that, the policy holder, the policy holder dies, then you know there would be uh, no insurance. You get, you will get nothing because the insurance has already ended. It was already terminated because it was only good for that particular year. Okay. So sometimes it's good uh, that if you get uh, life insurance, always make sure that it's current. Okay, so that if anything happens, then it's uh, there's going to be some sort of benefit for the people that you're going to leave behind. Okay, term life insurance is not necessarily just one year; it could be a few years, multiple years. It could even be decades. Okay, so you have that. 
whole life insurance. So the insurance is good for the entire lifetime of the policy holder. However, premium should be paid sometimes until the policy holder dies. Okay, so it's like you know a uh, perpetual uh term insurance or you pay every year for this or sometimes if you want you know some sort of advance payment like uh, you're going to pay for a few years uh a large amount of money or what do you call this it's it's much more expensive you know than the traditional uh term life insurance right so when the policy holder dies the death benefits will be given to the beneficiary so in a way uh, what do you call this? This is much more assuring because uh, regardless of when you die, as long, the, as long as the policy is in effect, then uh, your beneficiaries would still get the benefits, right? But again, <laughs> uh, again, this is the main you know, difference between term life and whole life insurance, right? In the term life, if the term expired or it was terminated already then if the how they call this if the event occurs after that then nothing will be uh, received by the beneficiaries but for whole life insurance of course since it already covers your whole life then whenever you di you die then your family members or your beneficiaries will uh, get the benefits Okay, and then we have universal life insurance. So not only will the policyholder have debt benefits, but also you can have savings, okay? A portion on your premium would be uh, put into the insurance and then the rest of it would be invested, okay? So a portion would, would what do you call this, would cover the insurance premium and then the, the other part would uh, be invested would be some sort of savings or some sort of investment, right? So you won't have to pay any more like the whole life insurance, but still get benefited. Okay, so something like that. Okay, so as long as let's say uh, it's good for five years, right? So after five years, if you have uh, faithfully uh, paid the premiums for five years, again, normally with these types of insurance, uh, the amount is much, uh, it's very expensive, okay? Like, not only 20000 a year, it could be like 50000 or 70000 a year. And then let's say five for 5 years or for 7 years or for 10 years, okay? But as long as you have been able to pay uh, in accordance with the term, then your life insurance would also be in effect. Let's say after five years, you've completed paying 70000 a year. Then after that, you know, sixth year, you won't be paying uh, anymore the annual premium. But even so, you are already insured for life, okay? And also your, you know, investment or savings, uh, it's, be, it's going to be uh, managed by whoever your insurance company is. And then sometimes you'd also get uh, living benefits, okay? Or if you don't, uh, if you opt not for that, then you might opt for um, the savings or the investment would also go to your beneficiaries when you die. Okay. Next, we have variable life insurance. So it's a bit similar to universal. However, you could control where to invest. Okay. Uh, while the interest in universal is stagnant, mostly in bonds, uh, that's where they invest the money in the variable you could go higher but it's a bit risky since you may get losses too okay in variable life insurance you can also choose to invest in stocks but stocks are riskier so there's a possibility that you're not going to earn a profit but there's a possibility that you might incur losses okay in uh, universal it's a bit uh, what do you call this low risk low return type of investment or saving so they normally they go for bonds and then bonds are pretty much safe investment but the interest rates are quite low okay and then and they have a note here 
Having life insurance is really good, especially for breadwinners, you know, head of family, uh, the one who supports the family, right? Any type of insurance, really, life insurance, health insurance. Okay. Okay, next we have health insurance. So every employee, every member, uh, well, every Filipino actually is now a member of PhilHealth, right? The health insurance uh, corporation under the Philippine government. However, it is sometimes not enough, especially if you are many in the family or if you have a weak immune system and, you know, you get sick uh, often, okay? And so, again, depending on the type of illness that you get, the feel health have uh, what they call this predetermined rates on how much they're going to cover for the cost or for the medical expenses, right? So let's say um, your, let's say your, what do you call this, your condition is much worse or much severe and you are to be billed a much higher amount than uh, the limits provided by PhilHealth. So you're going to have to cover uh, the excess, right? But if you have another health insurance and on top of your PhilHealth, then that insurance company would uh, would cover, could cover the, uh, the excess, right? But because also they have their own, you know, conditions, how much in addition to the PhilHealth can they cover? If uh, your hospital bill is within their limits, then everything will be covered. But again, if your, depending on your condition and your bills is in excess again, let's say it's much higher than what the insurance company would be paying, then you still have to cover some of it. But again, uh, given how you have your health insurance, they would be paying for it and not you. So that's a good thing already, right? Okay, sometimes if you're an employee, so there are employers who provide health insurance for their uh, workers. Sometimes it's, you know, individual workers wherein you cannot add on uh, coverage for your family members. It's exclusive for the employees. But then there are some that would also include uh, dependents, right, for the workers. So again, it depends on the employer. Uh huh. Okay, let's skip that. Next, we have educational insurance. So you know, a few, a few years back, I think about a decade or two before. So there have been, uh, what you call this scandal controversy regarding educational plans, educational insurance because of this. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just one company or something. But essentially, they were unable to provide the benefits that they promised to all the people who took educational plans, you know. And so they, these haven't been, uh, what do you call this? This haven't been popular in the last decade or so. But again, uh, there are still a lot of insurance companies that are offering this. And sometimes most people, I would prefer, what do you call this, opening savings accounts instead of getting educational insurance for their children nowadays, right? Because, you know, savings account much, what do you, what do you call this? Um, they can see, okay, the money is protected, although the earnings is very low, but at least they are sure that the money is there, right, in the account. Whereas in the educational insurance, although there is the reinsurance company, uh, there is still that uh, fear or doubt in the minds of the clientele or other people that these people might, you know, uh, just run away with the money again because of what happened back then, right? But still, you can have this option, educational insurance. If you want to prepare for the education of your children, then you can get an educational insurance, okay? Then you have vehicle and accident insurance, especially for motor motorcycle drivers, because there have been a lot of you know recorded cases of motorcycle accidents. So uh, cars as well. Okay, so this would what they call this for the cost of uh, the the vehicle, of course, that will be covered. So if there have been you know. Uh, damage to the vehicle, then the insurance company would be covering the cost of that. 
will depend on the car's cost, how many persons are in the vehicle, there might be deductibles too. Okay, so normally, of course, they do investigate first and make sure that uh, they do have certain conditions, you know, uh, cases wherein you will be covered and then cases wherein you won't be covered. You know, like for example, were you drunk driving, although I'm not sure. Okay, but there could be, there are definitely conditions. Okay, uh, compulsory third party liability. Uh huh. So this is for the, what do you call this? Renewing the license of vehicle, you need emission test, MVIS, CTPLN, payment. So if you have insurance, uh, if you don't have insurance, you don't get an OR. Yeah. A third party liability basically helps you in case. You hit someone by accident or a passenger who is a friend or co-worker of the driver got injured. Then you can get claims for their expenses. Okay, so you have your, what do you call this? Uh, auto insurance, vehicle and accident insurance, wherein the insurance company would pay for the cost of uh, the repair of the car or replacement of the car or the vehicle, right? But for the, uh, let's say medical expenses of the people that were injured in the accident then you have this compulsory third party liability okay and then uh huh okay, so you have that one okay and then also i've mentioned before you know, about uh, surety ship so you have your anyway you mentioned that in the previous video the example of that right but it's essentially uh, wherein there's a contract between two parties and then one of the party failed to, what do you call this, um, failed to perform in accordance with the terms of the contract and then there's a corresponding financial loss or financial damage, then the surety ship would be covering uh, for that damage or loss, okay? Now we have property insurance, so these are commonly for, you know, houses, buildings, okay, homeowners. Uh, in case of accidents like fire, theft, earthquake, floods, and many more, so the insurance company would pay for either, you know, the damage, the damages for the repair and maintenance okay, of the property, or what they call this, just simply and uh, with your uh, claims, you know, so that you can find uh, a new uh, that would help you find a new property, all right? Because, for example, for fire, it's possible that uh, the building would not be reusable, so we cannot actually repair that or maintain that. So you need to uh, find a new place, all right? And then the claims from the insurance could be used to get a new place, right? Travel insurance, so, you know, if you're riding a ship, a boat, or a plane, so you, ne uh, you need travel insurance, which would cover uh, in case you lose your uh, your baggage, you have delays, or you get into an accident okay, while you are traveling, all right? So the, uh, the example of the writer here, uh, insurance the insurance covered his medical expenses when when he got into an accident in uh pakistan okay so again i think the what do you call this the mantra or her uh not really what do you call it um better safe than sorry you know uh, some sort of quote to live by when you are getting an insurance better safe than sorry uh, some sort of code to justify getting an insurance because really it's better to be safe than sorry because you know just in case you get into an accident just in case something untoward happens just in case something unpleasant happens then you are covered and you would not be uh, bothered by the cost or the expenses because the insurance company will be paying for them all right Okay, so that's it for uh, this part. We now go to RA 10607, wherein we will be uh, discussing, or just we're just going to go over actually uh, the details. I've asked, I can read this on your own sweet time, right? I think these are pages 12 to 22. 
of uh, the RA. So essentially, they provided the classes of insurance, right? And then first, they have here the marine insurance, which also covers the different types of transportation, okay? Not only uh, the marine or the ships, but also the vessels, crop, aircraft, vehicles, goods, freights, cargoes, merchandise, effects, disbursements, profits, money, and securities, choices in action, instruments of debt, uh, valuable papers, bottom respondential interest, and all other kinds of property and interest therein. So those are the subject matter of marine insurance. So essentially, so you have these uh, vehicles, right, that are being used for transport. And in uh, normally, these are very expensive vehicles, right? Especially you have your ships or you have your airplanes, right? And so if something happens, then the marine insurance would be covering either the cost of the property or uh, the excess because uh, sometimes there's already a corresponding agreement between the owner and the person who asked to use uh, the property or the vehicle, right? And then uh, if that agreement does not cover the whole uh, loss that might be incurred by the owner, if something bad happens to the property, then the insurance company would be covering the remaining balance, right? So here, um, they provided the different, uh, what they call this, conditions uh, that are taken into account for the creation of the marine insurance, right? So you have the insurable interest. It's uh, required at the force for you to get a marine insurance. Uh, you have an insurable interest on the subject matter, right? And then you have um, concealment. Uh, in the general provisions, we've already mentioned this as well, that the owner or the person who's getting the insurance should provide all the details uh, necessary for the insurance company to you know, make a proper decision or assessment of uh, the insured property, right? Or how, you know, how much premium to charge, how much would be the benefit that would be uh, given in case something untoward happens, okay? And then you have your representation, implied warranties, okay, the voyage and deviation. So, you know, in case, uh, the, if our, of course, you have your itinerary, right? Some sort of itinerary. And then if uh, something happens and that was not followed, so there are deviations, what would be uh, the stand or what would be the possible changes that could happen with the insurance claim if there were deviations uh, with regards to the voyage of the marine transport. All right, or any of the vehicles or transport vehicles, right? Okay, then you have the loss, and then it was uh, discussed here, partial or total loss. So total destruction, irretrievable loss, and damage to the thing, which renders it valueless. Okay, so you have those uh, types or you know, definition of loss. And then you also have your constructive total loss, actual loss, right? There are additional information here. And then we have abandonment. Uh, he declares the relinquishment to the insurer of his interest in the thing insured. Okay, so that probably happens, but I'd say that doesn't happen, happen usually. Alright, and then abandonment must be neither partial nor conditional. Okay. Measure of indemnity. Evaluation of, in a policy of marine insurance is conclusive. So again, uh, taking into account the different uh, considerations that we've mentioned, you know, the insurance company would now make computations, uh, you know, considering the probabilities, risk, the value of the thing being insured. So they're going to measure how much would be the benefit or the claims that could be given to the insured in case something happens to the property, right? Uh -huh. And then we have fire insurance, so a type of property insurance, right? So in case something happens caused by fire, lightning, windstorm, tornado, or earthquake, these, uh, these are events that could cause fires, right? 
Okay, and then other uh, casualty insurance covering loss or liability arising from accident or mishap, excluding certain types of loss, which by law or custom are considered as falling exclusively within the scope of other types of insurance such as fire or marine. Okay, so normally here in casualty insurance, this covers um, vehicle, auto, auto insurance. All right. Uh-huh. Plate glass, burglary, theft insurance, personal accident, health insurance, I guess written by non-life insurance companies and other, and other substantially similar kinds of insurance. Okay, then we have the surety ship. Okay, so it's some sort of bond. Okay, you have your two parties and then the other party, the one who's going to perform something, who is being paid by the other party, uh, he gets this sort of bond or the contract of surety ship assuring the other party that he's going to perform in accordance with their agreement. And uh, to some sort of you know insurance for that is the contract of surety ship. So they pay the bond and then the benefit of the beneficiary would be the other party who's spending money for this other party to perform all right and then of course if this other party is if this other party fails to perform then the insurance company the surety ship would be paying the other party all right life insurance again the most common insurance on human lives and insurance appertaining there to are connected therewith all right Mm -hmm. Maybe payable on the death of the person or on his surviving a specified period or otherwise contingently on the continuance or cessation of life. I think there was this uh, life insurance where in when you turn 100, there's no more uh, life insurance. But when you turn 100, you're going to get uh, the benefits of the insurance, right? They're not going to wait for you to die anymore when you turn 100. When you turn 100, they're going to give it to you already. Again, but that's just that's just one type of life insurance, okay? Okay, so you have this information. I conditions on for a person who's going to take a life insurance, okay? And then you have your Micro insurance, I guess this is the last one that they provided, right? A financial product or service that meets the risk prote protection needs of the poor, where the amount of contributions, premium fees, or charges computed on a daily basis does not exceed 7.5% of the current daily minimum wage rate for non agricultural workers, and Metro Manila and the maximum sum of guaranteed benefits is not more than 1,000 times. Of the current daily minimum wage rate of the non agricultural workers in Metro Manila. No insurance company or mutual benefit association shall engage in the business of micro insurance unless it possesses all the requirements as may be prescribed by the commissioner. The commissioner shall issue such rules and regulations governing micro insurance. Okay. So I think a type of micro insurance is, you know, the loan insurance when you borrow money from a small lending company or from a co-op they there's this document that they have you sign uh, that in case you're unable to pay for some reason then the insurance company would be paying uh the lender all right a certain amount of money usually it does it doesn't uh, amount too much you know just a few thousand or a few ten thousand uh, up to the amount of the loan i think but since the amount of loan is, you know, only for uh, small amounts, up to thirty to fifty thousand, I think. So I think that would classify as micro insurance. Just, just a thought. All right. So that would be all for this video. We've uh, discussed the different types of insurance and then the classes of insurance. There are a lot of what you call this clauses here so you might want to read them if you are very much interested but essentially uh, i think most people would only be 
interested in reading all of this if they have a particular you know interest if, if they're actually going to uh, be claiming or would be applying for these certain types of insurance okay but for the most part majority of the public are only interested in uh, life insurance and then health insurance okay the other types are mostly for you know businesses you have your fire insurance uh, property insurance surety ship all right and then the others would be for people who have properties as well property auto auto insurance ctpl all right things like that okay so that's it for this one thanks and